The Hexen was the band that taught me more about intervals and how to use them. And this is one of the songs, Ritualis Satanum. Now this is a super cool riff, just played with two chords. So the first chord contains the notes E and F sharp. And this makes an E sus2 type of chord. Suspended means you just change the note of whatever the third is, a major or minor third. You can change your major thirds into natural second intervals, which is what this is, or you can make suspended fourth intervals, which is another interval I'll get to later. So that distance of two frets, E and F sharp. E here, seventh fret on A. F sharp, ninth fret on A. But if we play these two chords together, we get this very open suspended sound. So that's the first chord and the first interval, a natural second. The second interval, which we've already kind of talked about on this series, is a major third. So I'm not going to go into this in too much detail because you guys already know the shape. But the distance is four frets. So we have the E flat here and the major third up is the 10th fret on A, which is G. So 6th fret, 10th fret. Play those two notes together. We get our major third interval. And just on a very quick tangent, another important interval is the flat second which is when you move up and down a fret. And you can do that with power chords, and you can also make a very dissonant chord here, which has to be used in the right circumstances and sparingly because it doesn't sound very good. But all I'm playing here are the notes E and F. Seventh fret on A, third fret on D. Continuing on with the song, we have the verse riff. And the reason why this riff was so important is because I could just keep one note in one place and just move the higher note, this kind of melody going on with the chords. All I'm doing, I'm changing one note every time and this helps you learn your intervals. So if we go over the first chord here, we have our root and perfect fifth, a distance of seven frets, an interval called the perfect fifth. And then we change this note, which is the ninth fret of D, we're going to change that to the 12th fret on D. Which is a distance of 10 frets from your root note. It's just 10 frets higher. So those are the first two chords. And then it goes from a sus4, which is 7 and 7 on A and D. Now moving to an interval called the sharpened fifth, which is like your perfect fifth, but you just move the note one fret higher. So it's 7 on A, then 10 on D. Then it changes from the minor third to the perfect fifth. Then it goes to a C power chord. And then you flatten the fifth, so you're playing root with a flat fifth. Creating that tense sound. And then you get that really cool resolve going back to the first chord. Just to recap the intervals, so you've got your perfect fifth here, root and perfect fifth, root and minor seven, root and fourth, and then we have the sharpened fifth, eight 
frets up from the root note, your minor third, which is three frets up. Finishing on the fifth there. Then, no more root and fifth power chord. Root and flat fifth, which is a distance of six frets. So why else can this be important? Well, what it does is that it allows you to stay in one place and create a melody with your chords. And you can do this in any key. So I can take C, for example, right here. And that's how you can create more kind of epic styles of riffs. Now, I was using the same kind of playing style as Ritual Satanum, but if I do it more kind of my style... It's just by playing these kind of dyad shapes and keeping the bass note the same, but having this melody on the upper notes moving and twisting to give that traditional cold melodic black metal sound. Now if I go back to the key of E, what I'm playing there is just a descending melody. Just going down the notes of the E minor scale. Except I'm making that last chord more epic and more powerful by changing the bass note to give a stronger result. Because I can finish with my little finger still playing the E note and then creating the result by moving to this D major diet here. does make for a really cool sound. See so yeah, there, that whole riff was just me just keeping one finger on this E note and creating a melody with different intervals. And this is one way you can really develop your guitar playing, just by experimenting with some of these intervals.